Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So this green narrative with regards to cryptocurrency is starting to kind of take shape in a large way across the globe. I saw this from Michael at Valve 5 Links. Uh, BitDeer, one of China's biggest crypto mining operators, late last night blocked access to its platform by anyone using a mainland Chinese IP address. Its blocking measure comes on the heels of the government clampdown. So, uh, you know, it seems like overnight they were saying, you know, it's okay to uh, use tons and tons of energy to mine Bitcoin. And now they are just kind of flipping the script. BitDeer, one of China's biggest crypto mining operators late last night, blocked access to its platform by anyone using a mainland China IP address. Its blocking measures come on the heels as government clampdown begins. Uh, fast facts here, BitDeer Group posted a statement on its website saying uh, that they will block all access to users with mainland China IP addresses in order to cooperate with the regulatory requirements in related countries and regions and support compliance in the mining industry. Boy, China being environmentally conscious for once. What a novel concept. <laughs> is there more than meets the eye here? Uh, so let me continue. BitDeer is not the only mining firm withdrawing services to mainland Chinese users. Uh, on Monday, Jiang Zhuar, chief executive of BTC.top, uh, one of the biggest mining pools in China, announced that it would no longer provide joint mining services to those users and other miners, including BitFuFu, a miner part owned by Bitmain, and uh, Mick Cla or M Clouds, an operator in which OKX holds a stake. So uh, BitDeer, just another one to add to the list of uh, companies that are blocking some users from utilizing their services. This happening in China. Of course, we got that news last week that the Chinese government was really kind of putting the brakes on Bitcoin mining. Uh, and so this is what happened to the price of Bitcoin, just kind of cratered in. We saw a significant dip for Bitcoin price, uh, and that ultimately took the rest of the cryptocurrency market along with it. We're now seeing a bit of a recovery uh, for Bitcoin specifically. The rest of the crypto market is also recovering. So that's what's happening in China. Uh, we also got to take a look at this, guys. Iran bans Bitcoin mining, echoing China after blackout. So more towards this Bitcoin as an extreme waster of electricity narrative. Uh, Iran banned the mining of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin after a series of blackouts across major cities in the latest sign of growing unease over the digital assets energy use. The ban is effective immediately and will last until September 22nd, President Hassan Rouhani said on State TV on Wednesday. Uh, it follows a regional ban within top Bitcoin mining country China and electronic car maker Tesla's decision to stop selling cars using the token, both cited environmental concerns triggering a drop in Bitcoin's value. Now, they were saying that, uh, you know, in Iran, there are a lot of blackouts and uh, they are doing it in order to keep the electricity on during the summer. Iranian officials blame the surge in mining as well as increased manufacturing to a drop in hydroelectricity supply for blackouts that are playing havoc with businesses in daily life. Uh, so the government has been cracking down on these. 85% of mining is unlicensed, even enlisting spies to locate miners who hide computers everywhere from homes to mosques. Um, guys, this is no joke. Bitcoin, remember when Dan Pena said uh, Bitcoin is going to zero? Ugh, you know, is that, is that prophecy coming true? I mean, I don't know if it's going to zero, but... Um, it's not looking good for Bitcoin hodlers and, uh, you know, green cryptocurrency is going to be the future. We got more news on the cryptocurrency front as a whole, uh, with regards to letting users use their actual cryptocurrency on mainstream platforms. This from Julian Botelou. That's pretty big. He says crypto on ramps and off ramps from PayPal. So PayPal is letting users send Bitcoin off their platform. PayPal created a stir in the crypto market last year when it announced its millions of users could buy and sell Bitcoin. It drew criticism, of course, because they weren't allowing their users to actually actually utilize or uh, move their cryptocurrency off their platform. But now PayPal appears set to address the issue. Speaking at Consensus on Wednesday, PayPal's head of blockchain and crypto, Jose Fernandez da Ponte, said uh, the company will be adding support for third-party wallet transfers, meaning that PayPal and Venmo users will be able to send their Bitcoin not only to others on uh, those platforms, but to services like Coinbase and to outside crypto wallets as well. So this is going to be a big move. Now you have the on-ramp, that mainstream platform namely PayPal, that is allowing users to get into cryptocurrency easily. And once they're in cryptocurrency, now they can move their cryptocurrency as they should be allowed to, to any kind of third party wallet or, um, you know, other exchanges, so on and so forth. So this is great news. Here's a quote. We want to make it as open as possible, said Fernandez de Ponte, and we want to give choice to our customers. He added,
decided that PayPal wants its customers to bring their crypto to us so they can use it in commerce. And we want them to be able to take the crypto they have bought with us and take it to the destination of their choice. We understand there is more utility to those tokens if you can move them around. So we are definitely exploring how we can let people transfer crypto to and from their PayPal addresses. I also saw this guys from the Cryptic Poet here on Twitter. More VeChain news. NFTs powered by VeChain will soon be obtainable using VET tokens in Vim world. So what does this have to do with? According to the latest report, smart NFTs powered by VeChain will soon be obtainable using VET tokens in Vim world. This was announced by Vim world of a revolutionary smart non-fungible token ecosystem. Going by the report, trading of VET on the platform will soon be activated. Uh, VET trading on the platform is already undergoing tests by a number of community testers, which will be made available to everyone soon uh vim world tweeted we want to collect vims and get ready for veed feeding and events we're enabling vet trading on the vim market vet trading is already open to a select number of community testers and will be widely available to everyone else soon so here's the tweet to that effect more developments going on for VeChain. I got to thank the Cryptic Poet for posting that. And XRP accounts, guys, have spiked over the past few months. There is no denying it. This from XR Patients here on Twitter. The last time that happened was right before XRP hit its all-time high. And so uh, here's just a line graph, a simple line graph, demonstrating XRP accounts from the year 2013, early 2013, all the way to present day. XRP accounts have gone up. And, uh, you know, even though Ripple's in a lawsuit, many people feeling very optimistic about the cryptocurrency. Uh, you know, we have seen a bit of a decline in price. Of course, the market has been uh, a bit wishy-washy as of late. We did get that news, as I'd mentioned earlier, that Bitcoin is being scrutinized in China. That is taking the rest of the cryptocurrency market down. Uh, I've got XRP here real quick on the chart. And, uh, you know, again, uh, like I mentioned in this morning's video, the price really hasn't moved too much. We are starting to see a bit of a rebound. We are starting to see higher lows on the uh, shorter time frames. If I bring it up here on the hourly, you guys can see we are seeing the higher lows. We do have a lot of work cut out for us though. And uh, you know, this might trade in a sideways channel for a while before we really start to see a significant breakout. Um, nevertheless, Brad Garlinghouse has been making the rounds. I don't know if you guys saw this uh, interview from Squawk Box. Uh, I was kind of excited when I was about to press play, and then as soon as the interview happened, it was just kind of more of the same. Nothing necessarily new that we don't already know about. This article here is uh, from CNBC directly, and so uh, they talked a little bit about that uh, Ripple made the Disruptor 50 list this year as well, two years in a row, uh, and the interview is here. The five-minute interview is here with Brad Garlinghouse. You can click the play button there if you want to watch that. Uh, but again, nothing, um, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing new. You know the standard answers with regards to what is going on. The one thing I did find kind of curious was the fact that you know these interviewers are interviewing uh these guys about cryptocurrency and you'd think they do a little bit of research uh but this guy here i don't know his name but this guy here if you know his name put it down in the comment section uh so i know for next time because i see this guy uh on squawk box a lot doing some of these interviews he didn't even know the difference between coins that are mineable and coins that are not mineable. He assumed that XRP, that you would be mining XRP. And Brad Garling, as you know, took up uh, part of the interview just kind of explaining that basic point about the XRP cryptocurrency, which I know to some of us in the XRP community is like, oh, come on, really, dude? You don't know that much? Why are you doing this interview? Anyway, if you guys do want to watch it, I will link it here in the description of this video. I also saw this from Bank XRP, and this is great news because Bank of America now apparently officially listed uh, on the top of Ripple's customer page on their website. So uh, I guess this is a new addition. We already knew that Bank of America has been a Ripple partner, but I guess now it's uh, open enough, out in the open enough that they are willing to list them on their website. So, uh, I mean, that's great optics uh, for, you know, the other American banks. We're going to want to compete, right? If they see Bank of America on Ripple's page. They now know officially what they are contending against. Cryptocurrency innovation is going to happen. I know right now it doesn't feel like uh, the United States is really in a spot where um, this can move forward. Um, I did a video this morning asking, is Gary Gensler basically just a Jay Clayton 2.0? Well, I'll link that video up here if you guys didn't catch that. There are a lot of reasons why I could see uh, people, why, why people would think that, uh, especially in the XRP community, considering XRP and Ripple currently in a lawsuit with the SEC. Um, you know, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of support too also to suggest that, um, 
You know, Gary Gensler's just doing his best with what he has been given. If you guys didn't see that video, I would indeed check it out. I think ultimately, though, the writing is on the wall. And XRP is going to be the chosen cryptocurrency. Of course, we've got the Green Initiative. Of course, we've got, uh, you know, this, this whole narrative shift that I didn't think was going to happen so quickly with regards to um, the amount of energy being utilized to mine Bitcoin in China and, uh, you know, in other countries like Iran. Now these governments are really clamping down on energy usage and people's ability, the people's ability to uh, mine Bitcoin. So we have the Green Initiative. We know the Green Initiative is uh, first and foremost for organizations like the World Economic Forum, who has ties to Ripple. And so is it any surprise that we're seeing this, guys? I saw this from Real XRP Boy, the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, James Bullard, says most cryptocurrencies are worthless. And he also noted that if a cryptocurrency can facilitate transactions that are difficult to make in conventional currencies, then they will have a purpose and might circulate alongside nation-backed currencies. What does that sound like to you? If a cryptocurrency can facilitate transactions, i.e. cross-border payments, and if they can do that and make it in conventional currencies, so for example, in exotic corridors, let's use the USD to the Brazilian real, for example, well, then those cryptocurrencies will have a purpose and might circulate alongside the nation-backed currencies. This is what the Fed's Bullard is saying. He talked about inflation risks and what lies ahead for Fed policy in an interview with Google Finance on Monday. He also talked about cryptocurrency, given the high volatility in crypto prices observed over the past few weeks. Here's what he said about cryptocurrencies. I have a slide deck on this that's called non-uniform currency and exchange rate chaos and a couple of things that are in there one is that currency competition is nothing new private currency issuance has been addressed historically in monetary theory he continued milton friedman said that if you allow private currency issuance you'll get all kinds of private currencies being issued and that's exactly what has happened he went on to say we have a couple of thousand of these around and most of them are worthless remember what i keep saying guys about the cryptocurrency market cap Right up here, this is how many cryptocurrencies exist, or rather that are at least listed on CoinMarketCap, which pretty much lists every single cryptocurrency, over 10,000. And uh, what Bullard is saying here is that most of them are useless. I think if the cryptocurrency can facilitate transactions that are difficult to make in conventional currencies, then they will have a purpose and might circulate alongside of the nation-backed currencies. Bullard proceeded to discuss the volatility in the crypto market. He discusses that as a fundamental problem, but that is really just the reaction uh, to immature, illiquid, uh, Wild Westy type markets, really. He goes on to say, so lots of interesting things going on in this space. And of course, the Fed is also looking at FedCoin. So we've got a lot going on watching this very carefully and i guess in a nutshell that's where i'm at on this most cryptocurrencies will be worthless other than the cryptocurrencies that can facilitate transactions that are difficult to make in conventional currencies those are the ones that are going to have a purpose and might circulate alongside the national fiat currencies like the usd the brazilian real the euro the japanese yen whatever you want sounds like he's describing xrp but that's just my opinion i want to hear what you guys think please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already like the video if you like the content i'm providing i always love hearing your comments see you in the next one guys